Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is your intuitive star seed to marry your light worker. Back with another general reading. Thank you guys for returning. Mwah, hugs and kisses to you. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Hope the messages resonate with you in some way, shape, form, or fashion. All right. I do curse on this channel, so just letting you know, give you a heads up. Thank you guys for your support of my channel as well. Sending you guys love and light on your journey. So let's get into this read. Let's get the message for you guys. See what it is, what it ain't. First card out, take things slow this time around. Man or woman. Next card, your manifestations are coming in right now. So basically, this is about whatever it is you got coming in, whether this is a reconciliation or whether this is somebody completely new, even if it's, you know, new friends, new opportunities, you know, whether it's dealing with a job, whether it's something in love, whether it's something, you know, in your soul tribe. But I feel like whatever it is you're taking things slow with, For some of you, it could be in the new beginnings that's coming around for you. So it could be in love and it could be also in a partnership involving work. Or it could be ending up something that with work can result into a love situation for some of you. But it is got it does have something to do with a collaboration of some sort. Rather, like I said, whether it's in love for some of you... Uh, for others, it could be a job opportunity. It could be something new you're venturing into, like I said, either with love or work or both. It could be somebody you end up working with. It could be involving somebody you're working with. Only you know what you're manifesting at this time or what you were, but whatever you were manifesting is coming in. Whatever you are manifesting is coming in. So if something is seeming like it's going slow, um, even though you're hearing back or you are getting out, networking, in whatever area of life that you're putting more work into or that whatever has your attention at this time, don't rush it, okay? Don't expect something to go really fast or for you to get a whole lot of answers right away, but they require you to just take things slow. Just let things happen naturally. Just go with the flow is what I'm hearing.
next card security footage from neighbors Next card, someone could have life path to or be in a second house. Your second house involves focus on relationships, romance or otherwise, and family. Life path two covers peacemaker with an artistic soul, sensitive and perceptive. So like I said, whoever I'm talking to or whoever energy this is, you're, whatever you're manifesting at this time, you could have life path too or be in your second house. But this does involve um, relationships, even if it's work or partner, um, ship or collaboration of some sort, even, you know, with family. So it could be, you know, either or for some of you. Or for somebody in particular but it's dealing with somebody that's focuses on their families on relationships whether it's friendships um love work you know um family neighbors you know what i'm saying just people in general that it comes when it comes to you actually having to network with them you know on some level whether it's you know your neighborhood you know your community your job you know with your family with work you know what i'm saying in love um family dynamics you know what i'm saying so but you're somebody that's considered you know to be a peacemaker you know to bring balance to things you know even if it's family drama or something like that is that you come in as somebody that is here to make peace you know what i'm saying to bring a solution to a situation to bring balance you could be an empath also could be very intuitive um because your perception of things you know when it comes to how you see something it's deeper than, you know, what is on the surface. It's like you look within, you know, to the root of something. So you, you know, could also be born on the second of a month. Could be significant too. Next card, options are limited. So whoever this person is, there could be somebody that, you you know, you're being asked to take things slow in the situations. Um, even if this is involving love or um, or work. It's a thing where somebody may have had a lot of options at one time, even if it involves people. Um, even if they were juggling people, jobs, you know, um, streams of income, they may have had a lot of options in the past. Somebody's options are limited now. Somebody options wasn't really something to depend on in the first place. I feel like whatever somebody had um, to choose from or thought they had like an array of things or people to choose from, they realize it now those are not really any valid candidates like at all like they're not really suited for what somebody really can really use as a goal they would have in mind like somebody cannot really see the the use in somebody to achieve something they working on like they may have already tried this and realizing the options is limited Somebody may have thought having a lot of options was the best way to go until they realized these are options that are not really suited for what they are trying to do or accomplish. So even if it's a, a goal somebody has in mind, they ain't got the right suitors for that. They may have a lot of options. It's like you can have a, it's like going into a job and they say, and you say, hey, you know, you guys hiring? And they say, and did you always hear people say, well, we're taking applications. 
Damn, who ain't taking them? The thing is, are you doing interviews? Are you hiring? Because you could just do an interview and not hire anybody. You could do an interview a day and not hire anybody for months. But it is a thing where people will take an application, yes. Are you doing interviews? Yes. Would you like one? Yes. You get the interview. And then you sitting back at home like, I wonder when they're going to call me, you know, for the position. Okay, now that's something else. Because <laughs> they may already have somebody in mind. Their job is to get more, you know, when are you going to do some of these interviews? You know, we get this. We need to get this position filled. Somebody may have somebody in mind, but they're going to keep taking applications. They may keep doing interviews, and I'm getting that scenario. If somebody just kept taking applications, kept doing interviews, but it's like somebody really was trying to use the options that they had, you know, as just options. Like, they were just looking at the fact they were getting a lot of applications. They were getting a lot of people that were interested. But now when somebody want to go back and see if one of these people are actually, you know, somebody useful for long term purposes in the area they need them in, they realize that now these people really don't even have the qualifications that they're looking for. They got a lot of people lined up, but not everybody is aligned with, the, you know, the position that they want this person to have or the position they look in the field. Okay. But somebody's running out of options. And, you know, they may have thought they had a lot of people lined up, but they really don't. Less and less people are, you know, available to somebody. Next card, government planning another scientific attack. Experiment on the chosen on chosen ones. I'm getting that moment when this lady was talking about, it's a black lady too, she was talking about how she wanted people to, whoever follows her, I want to say she's on YouTube, she could be on Instagram, but she was talking about how to prepare for the next COVID um, situation that we, she feels like we have coming up. And she felt like whatever we went through with COVID was not over. You know, they were going to go back to a whole nother stage of how they want to enforce this fear tactic, you know, to make it look like it's something that's, you know, a, a pandemic all over again. But it's to try to try something new out by way of calling it COVID all over again, only to go back and make the things that you were using at one time to fight off whatever symptoms or issues that came with COVID. It's like they've already neutralized you being able to use that now or use that again. And that's what I'm getting is, but it's really an attack designed to attack chosen ones, whether they're children, whether they're adults, whether they're elderly. And I remember um, being in Arizona and hearing somebody say they did, they asked Alexa what the population would be in 2025 in Germany, 
or something like that. And it gave the population total. And that person was looking at the the census, you know, yeah, it was a population census, like, of 2025. And at the time, when we were going through COVID, it was a whole nother year. You know what I mean? And it was like, the, the Alexa was able to give the census count, you know, on the population, you know, total for 2025, you know, at the year that we were currently in at that time. And even I was like, how the hell you already know what the, <laughs> what the hell the population total going to be? And so it was like, even then I was like, so you got something else planned to, you know, cut down on the population, cut down on, you know, their answer to health care, you know, or anything else is to, you know, kind of get enough people out the way that we don't have to go through you know, insurance crisis where people can't afford health care. If we get, you know, people out of the way, we won't have to worry about trying to afford, you know, health care for people that's, you know, ill and, you know, um, cancer stricken or whatever. You know what I'm you know what I'm saying? But it's really an attack on chosen one. It's not like they're gonna put it on a, a blimp and, and you know, put it in the sky for you to see it. And people don't know chosen ones are just, you know, among us that just you know, appear as regular people. You know what I'm saying? Just anybody else. And they are. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's not meant for an earth angel to walk around with a halo for everybody to see. You know what I'm saying? It would be the same thing as Jesus. You know, going through his life and experiencing what he did. Because you're going to have people that love you. You're going to have people that hate you. You're going to have people that are great entities that are there just for, you know, what they can get out of a situation and they're good. You know, they don't really support you or love you either. You know what I'm saying? Um, they're not against you or love you, but they do want what they want from you. You know what I'm saying? And that's basically how a chosen one, an earth angel, anybody else that's not chosen or earth angel you know what i'm saying um will experience that light and dark will experience that but for some you know it's a real spiritual warfare when you look at the amount of people you know during COVID that are no longer here with us you know what i'm saying but you also had a lot of babies that were born in place of the souls that were lost the lives that were you know gone you know on them same days a baby was born you know what i'm saying so for those that don't believe in reincarnation you know it is what it is but you know the card is out here so at the end of the day it's not something that ain't being talked about it's not something that's not being um prepared for you know when you when you stay ready you ain't got to get ready if you stay, you know, aware, you ain't got to be made aware. You know what I'm saying? If you stay prayed up, you ain't got to worry about trying to, you know, catch up. So at the end of the day, you know, it's up to us once we plant the seed, you know, for readers. Once they plant the seed, it's up to you how you prepare for that, how you move after that. The seed has already been planted. Now, you know, you have to determine what side, you know, of the fence you're on, what side of the, you know, the battle you're going to be on, you know what I'm saying? But you have to be aware of a choice is going to have to be made. And too many people, you know, think it's time to waste and they'll say like the year 2000, oh man, you know, it's going to be the end of the world. Even if it was, what changed? Who, who still, who's still doing the same shit they were doing in 2000 and 2024? Who's still doing it? Who's still doing it? Like, is anybody still doing something that same, gets thinking the same way, moving the same way, treating people the same way? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just saying. But I feel like they running, even if this is, you know, for some, you know, they could be running out of options. The options is limited.
I feel like even if they are using, you know, another experiment on some chosen ones. It's spiritual warfare nonetheless. You know what I'm saying? It's still what it is. Because I feel like a lot of chosen ones survived COVID. Even if they did take the vaccine. And it's still that thing of, you know, how. And it was someone that was, you know, that felt like that was the moment, you know, to use a fear tactic as big as that. You know what I'm saying? To plant that seed of fear and doubt. You know what I'm saying? So... It was a thing where people got away, you know, with, I ain't going to even say got away, but they had a choice in not taking the vaccine. And people were so livid about those that didn't. And they were just going, you know, I'm like ready to steamroll over people. You didn't take the vaccine? Do you not want us to, you know, get past this thing? Or you really wanted all of us to die? Like, shit your ass up. Shit. But the main ones bitching and complaining about something and then turn around and you know, they realizing, you know, what it really was about. And now they sitting over here with their lip tight, you know, ready to try to support what's going on, with what happens next. Now that they, you know, been made a fool out of and made an example out of by the fact, you know, you still took it and you still caught it and you, you know, looking for somebody else to blame. And they using you to turn against everybody else because it was a whole, you know, uh, experiment in the first place it was like well if they don't take it we're gonna get the people that did to turn on them even if they're family and turn on their family and just look at their family as you know like a damn purge like really i mean it was like people lost friends over you know who they voted for when it came to obama and trump you know people couldn't even get along good friends been friends for years you know the minute one friend voted for the other one you know the, voted for this president and Voted for this candidate, you know, they ain't talk since. Still ain't talking. And it's just another thing, you know, to drive a wedge. You know what I'm saying? To try to remove as many light workers, you know, out of the way. You know, people that do come through, you know, to heal. They come through to bring awareness. They come through to help guide you and you got some that will be karmic as ever and they'll be part of you know this government you know train of folks that need people to go in and infiltrate your neighborhood and they'll use folks that are sitting out here karmic as hell to make it look like it's some it's this going on it's that going on no it's it's an experiment nonetheless even if this if it's meant to turn you and you know against you know your whole family over a vaccination you know what i'm saying so at the end of the day when it comes to you know that attack is it's something i've been seeing in social media so i i have been seeing people preparing and i had to go back and look like COVID, and i'm looking like damn this is and they time stamping it like the day they made this you know they saying what today is when they open up a video you know what i'm saying so it's not something that somebody reposting so if there are people that are preparing for another pandemic you know to arise and i feel like god plants those people you know on our path to make us aware and that's all they are supposed to do is plant the seed you know next card karmic obsessed with attacking you
came out in reverse, but I'm getting that somebody in this karmic, it could be I'm getting family members, a family member. Karmics don't have to be just, you know, involved in a love situation. It could be family. It could be, you know, co-workers. It could be people in your community you don't even know. And I feel like somebody is like um, part of a gang stalking situation where they could have been paid, you know, to do things, you know, around your home. Because you do have neighbors having some footage of something going on but I feel like somebody is part of a gang stalking situation so it's kind of like somebody's targeting a chosen one chosen ones but whoever this reading resonates with you could be involved in something um, that got something to do with gang stalking as far as this card is concerned but you for some of you you may not be aware of things going on around you that is like out of the ordinary or something that you would look at as a concern because maybe some things are worse than others but it's not something that you question it's like you you see it and you don't you know what i'm saying it's not something you're gonna spot it coming out the door and instead of going to your car going about your day you you know, let it get you to the point where you turn around and go back in the house and you just stay because of what you feel or what you saw or how, you know, weird something looked, you know what I'm saying, on your way to the car or on your way out of the driveway, on your way up the road and you just turn around like, you know what, that's kind of weird. Let me go back home and that kind of thing. So whoever this was that was obsessed with attack attacking you, they may have stopped. I feel like somebody has went in another direction or has had a change of heart when it comes to what they are being paid or assigned or being instructed to do or co co coerced into doing. Whoever this karmic is, it's not somebody you know. Um, and a lot of times they'll use, you know, even in gang, stalk, gang stalking situations, they'll use people in your community. Um, yeah, somebody doesn't stop doing something because of how it's making them look in the community. I feel like somebody may not even live in your community, in your area, but they may be, you know, being paid to watch you, you know, do little things. They may have a list of things or they may have been talked to about some of the things they can do or get away with without it being something somebody can report as an issue because it's just public property or whatever so they really can't say you have to go um or you need to move your vehicle or something like that so it's not something that you know somebody can say well you know they're stalking me you know they they always park there and do this and do that and they're like well this is public property so we can't just you know you can't just press charge on them because they sitting in the street you know what i'm saying they haven't pulled in your yard they're not even in front of your house you know, they're not close enough to your property to be off, you know, to be trespassing. So they pretty much can't do that. You know what I'm saying? There's not much we can do, but it's like somebody giving, being given a list of things um, or being told some of the things that they know people will try to get authorities involved in to stop something. But it's their intentions is to make you feel like you can't trust authority or call on them for help because of the things they've already covered somebody being able to do to you that the, you can't do anything about and they want you to feel helpless they kind of want you to 
you know, feel hopeless in a situation where you just settle for the fact that somebody is able to do something that you can do about it. You know, it's just going to be a way of life, you know, for you. You know, you're just going to have to build your life around, you know, um, you know, people doing this. And I want to say, um, one of my subscribers, you know, shared with me an incident with her going through that. And I hope and pray, you know, that, um, she gets her justice in that situation because she did make some footage, you know, along with some other subscribers that go through it too. Other readers that, you know, share their story, you know, when it comes to gang stalking situations, they got a whole lot to do with the government. Sometimes it's, you know, some that don't, you know what I'm saying? Some of it has things to do with personal um, situations where people, you know, have you in a life insurance fraudulent scam, you know, where they trying to, you know, uh, put you in a situation where you look made to look like you're losing your mind and then they can come in and just, you know, try to unalive you or try to, you know, send somebody in to do it to say that you committed this heinous, you know, or this, this, you, you went on a suicide mission, you know what I'm saying? And then they make the whole thing look like a suicide, but they got to make you look crazy and out of your mind first, you know, like you're just making a whole lot of, you know, unrational, you know, issues, you know what I'm saying, topics, you know, talking, you know, out the side of your neck. They got to make you look crazy first, you know, kind of like a Jamie Foxx situation, you know what I'm saying, Jim Carrey situation, you know what I'm saying? So it's like they got to get that going first. And when people, you know, wait to the last minute to, you know, sit back and listen, wait for the outcome, it's sad. It is sad, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like somebody refrained from being obsessed with attacking somebody, especially you collective, because neighbors have gotten footage. Somebody's neighbors have gotten involved with not only you, you know, pleading your case, but them actually, actually having um, cameras outside their homes where they're picking up people sitting in front of their house for no damn reason with flashing headlights and some, you know, weird ass parking, you know, facing somebody's house and they not knowing like what the hell going on and they just neighbors. You know what I'm saying? And they realizing, you know, this neighbor may not be sharing it with nobody because they don't want to be looked at like they're crazy. But they also may have told neighbors that really I ain't seeing nothing until now, paid attention to something until now. And now they're willing to let this neighbor know, like, hey, we got some footage. So if you need proof, you know, we're here. And I feel like somebody's neighbors have went out their way to let somebody know, like, hey, we recording your ass. So I feel like whoever was obsessed with attacking you, they have been confronted by neighbors, neighbors saying that they have footage of this person doing it. And they may be revealing to these people like what they do for a living, who they know in high places that, you know, I have this, I have that of you, I have your tag number. They may not have it, but I'll damn sure provide it. I um I do this for a living. I have this. whatever, even if they haven't done that, reveal what they can do. It's more eyes on somebody that was attacking you in the 3D when it comes to this gang stalking situation. Um, and even if it's something in the 5D, somebody has got that warning. Somebody got that message to like to sit the fuck down. Get your regular ass somewhere and sit down there. Because, you know what I mean, it's checkmate. Your, your ass done, you know, we done pulled up on you. You know, we here now. Go sit your ass down. And I feel like somebody neighbors, you know, is using their camera footage to let somebody know, like, I know what you're doing. Stop doing it. Stop coming around here. And I feel like somebody doesn't, you know, refrain from doing whatever it is. Somebody, somebody realizing now, like, this money ain't worth what these people are saying, you know. next card by Thanksgiving it came out in reverse so you could be getting a message of concern
or a message could be coming in about this before Thanksgiving. Because it's a thing where, you know, also I'm getting like if it's in love, if it's in a partnership where somebody's, you know, obsessed with attacking you, you know, for others of you when it comes to a ending of a cycle with somebody that could have felt like attacking you was the best way to go to kind of preserve what they had going with somebody else or what they felt like you were a threat to this person. Like I said, they've been spiritually sat the fuck down. Somebody, either a person involved the ex-lover here then set the record straight with somebody or somebody it could have been both ways somebody a past person ex-lover here could have told somebody you know where to get on to get off at what they how they see things going the way they want something to go the way something is going to be um where they stand with somebody and somebody don't like it and they may have expressed you know how they know, you know, they have been part of something that they feel like they've been getting away with. Like, I feel like somebody could have been exposed by way of some neighbors letting somebody know, like, hey, I got it on camera that what this person did. You know, they may be telling you they didn't do this or they didn't do that or they don't know something about this, but they do. This is what, you know, we have on camera. Like, we didn't think nothing of it at the time. This person may have felt like, like I said, they may have felt like they, you know, if this is a, a also a love or a romant, romantic situation, involvement, this could have been some, you know, for some others of you. Somebody involving themselves in attacking you and somebody, you know, um, involved with a past person of yours has been exposed by way of somebody's neighbors actually revealing to them what they saw what camera footage they have of somebody they involved with you know being part of or them pretending they didn't know something you know about something or they don't know who did so, yeah Next card, thoughts of me defending my choice to be with you to my family makes me feel less than a man. Somebody somebody holds the family. Remember, it could be a father figure. Just be it could be just somebody parents, okay? Um, somebody holds their parents in high regard. And I feel like they may have, you know, allowed things to be said, you know, and looked at a certain way. Um, all because this person knew that what was being said was something that they didn't want to go against defending it or supporting it or defending you or supporting what they was. It's like somebody was a people pleaser. Somebody allowed things to be looked at the way they were looked at and they didn't speak up. 
you know, to defend you in any way or to make sense of something. You know what I'm saying? To solidify something that nobody really even had any facts about. They were just speaking, you know, on somebody's name recklessly. You know what I'm saying? Talking about things they didn't have any insight to. Just, you know, assuming things, you know, because it sounded like something they felt like fit the situation that or the point they were trying to make to somebody to make them go in the direction they were going in or they wanted them to go in. They were manipulators. You know, they were, you know, very low vibrational. They were very mentally. Somebody meddles a lot. But I feel like somebody also holds family in high regard to the point that they felt like it would be disrespectful if they spoke up for you in the way that they felt like they have to do now. And I feel like this is somebody that is going to be hit with the fact, especially from a father's figure, their dad may even, you know, feel some type of way. And I feel like they hold their dad in high regard when it, when it comes to this person defending them wanting to be with you to their parents. Because I feel like their parents had more to say than anybody else. And I feel like their parents may have, you know, led the train, you know, of comments with everybody else in the family, other family members. Okay. Somebody's father is going to be, I feel like they're going to, Question is masculine about why didn't you say this? You know, if you felt that way, if you cared about this person that way, if you say you love them like you say you did, like why didn't you, you know, say that? You know what I'm saying? Why would you let us, you know, say this and say that? You know what I'm saying? If that's how you feel. But I feel like somebody allowed parents to say something, especially something to, you know, just go on because they didn't want to be, left out of the loop when it comes to family. I feel like even if it's something that where a dad may have somebody in line for some kind of inheritance or something, they feel like they're not going to get it if they speak up. You know, let me just, you know, keep the peace, keep my mouth closed. So whatever it is, you know, my mama want to, you know, got in line to leave me or my daddy got in line to leave me. They actually leave it to me or they don't look down on me as somebody that, you know, they because it's a thing where somebody knows that if they say something or they feel as though if they say something it's going to boot them out of things that they are in line for with this family with their family so if it's an inheritance it's something that they it has been discussed with them already uh, or what somebody's end results would be when it comes to uh, inheritance, you know, like a will or something like that. Somebody saying, I'm going to leave you this. I'm thinking about leaving you that. You are uh, the person I feel like is, you know, one line for this. I know you probably more equipped, you know, business minded, know how to do this. You know, I trust living this to you, you know, and somebody not want to speak up because they want to still be you know, held in that high honor, in that, you know, regard that way. And they feel like if they speak up, it's going to knock them out of that list of options that somebody has, you know, to choose from. So it's like somebody, you know, choosing, you know, their family over you and what their family thinks of them over what you thought of them, what they think of themselves or what this family wants for them and how this family views their happiness over their family's, you know, expectations and their family's happiness, you know, with them being, you know, pleased with them. And I feel like somebody was a people pleaser the whole time. You know, for a very long time, maybe even since they were a child, 
you know, doing things to try to win that person's, that fam, that mother, their father's love, their praise, you know, and that may get them down more than anything, you know, to not be able to come through and, and please their parents and see a smile on their face and get that approval from their parents. And I feel like somebody allow their happiness to be something that their parents, you know, spoke on and literally showed them or they allowed their parents to speak on something that really separated them from you. And them not even realizing that to get that connection back with you, it's going to start where they allowed it to be destroyed. And that's between them and their parents. You know what I'm saying? It had nothing what allowed something to not manifest at a time when you wanted something with this person and what they wanted you know, in their happiness, in their journey, somebody was not fully aware of how much control they gave somebody else over their happiness and how long they have given somebody control over their happiness. And now this person feels as though they got like so much time, they got to go back and express themselves about just to clear the path for you and them in their family to where you are accepted, you know, into this family dynamic without a false narrative. You know what I'm saying? It's like somebody wants somebody to see you the way they see you. And I feel like they did not allow, they didn't stand up for that then. And I feel like they know their parents is going to not, you know what I'm saying? Not like, they know it's going to be a back and forth. But I feel like they know it's something that, they should have said something then instead of, you know, letting so much time go by to go back and try to speak on how long ago and how long it's been and how much they have been feeling this way about you and them knowing it. Especially if this person been watching their family accept the fact that they... Uh, went on without you or you went on without them and them not know how their child actually feel about that. Or especially if they having to look at the fact their parents don't even give a damn that you went on. But they do. They don't, you know what I'm saying? This person does care that you moved on without them. They do. But they know their parents don't. Whoever these family members are, I keep saying it's their parents. Could be siblings too, but I feel like they only you know, supported by their parents, you know, saying this and that. They could have siblings that are people pleasers too, you know what I'm saying? They they want to please their parents. And there's nothing wrong with that, but at the price of your happiness and not having boundaries, you have to stand for something because they're not going to let you tell them who they can and be, you know, can and can't marry. You know, this person ain't going to be able to tell they, they dad, you know, not to be with their mom, even if it ain't their real dad. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, you don't need to be with her. You know why? Such and such, such and such. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure there's a child, you know, a past person of yours that may have parents that are not, you know, biologically they parents one or the other. But for some of you, they could be. But at the end of the day, when you don't know exactly what has come transpired between them to be where they at right now, and be in that 30 year, 40 year, 60 year marriage, you know, if you don't not have weighed, made aware of what they challenges were, then you don't know how to weigh, you know, what you going through based on what they've had to experience. You know what I'm saying? Especially if they haven't shared that with you. But if you're a child and you've seen some infidelity, you just didn't know that's what it was called. Whether it's with a step parent or your biological parents, you know, it's something that, you know, it some, seems like in some families it's understood not to bring it up. It's just unspoken. 
but you just don't bring it up. You know what I'm saying? Until you get mad enough to say, well, hey, you know, you did that like this. Who was that guy? You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I was made to think, you know, he was, you know, just a good friend of ours, a, you know, just a close neighbor of ours, a family friend. But you really saying that, you know, you and this guy had a thing? You know, does dad know? That kind of thing. Child, whatever. Next card, speaking ill on your gifts because theirs don't work on you. Divine feminine, divine masculine. So somebody literally could have went towards somebody that is bitter at the fact that somebody's walking away from them that, you know, they that had favor on them at one time. Their family had favored this person. But this is somebody that, you know, could have came up against you spiritually, you know, in the 5D and possibly in the 3D. And fucked around and got, you know, spotted on somebody's, you know, camera footage, you know, being low down. But somebody don't like the fact that, you know, you... Somebody just mad because they can't, you know, send the psychic attacks to you that they've been able to use against so many other people, you know, even if it is having, you know, an evil tongue. You know what I'm saying? And that's spell worthy by itself. Speaking ill on somebody, you know, even, you know, to the extent of envy or jealousy, you know what I'm saying? Or literally just being hateful, just being mean spirited. And I feel like somebody is. They're very mean. They're very spiteful. But I feel like somebody's sneaky as fuck with it too. They be trying to be. They be low down as hell. And they be trying to be low key with it. And I feel like somebody fucked around and got somebody's real intentions on camera. Got somebody's real character on camera. Like for real. And even if it's somebody that, you know, been known to be able to say something about somebody, get a reading on somebody, be able to attack somebody, you know, in the way that they've been doing in the past to really try to, you know, limit their competition, you know, when it comes to somebody having options and, and using, you know, they gifts to eliminate, you know, somebody's uh, options. I feel like even if it's a masculine, it's like somebody going out of their way to intimidate anybody that may be attracted to somebody. Let's just say it's a masculine. Anybody, any female that may get them a second look, it's like somebody would literally, you know, do some divination on this, even if they don't know them. If they standing in line and you just happen to, you know, be popping out here today, you know what I'm saying? You done came through dripping. You know what I'm saying? You in, you in, I mean, you loving on yourself and showing, you know, you taking yourself out to eat. You out here just pampering yourself. It's, it's, you know, it's me time today. You know, let's get it. And somebody out with their man and they man give you a second look, child. They ready to, they, they can't get back to the house or the car or the bathroom by themselves fast enough to try to do something to eliminate the competition. Even if it take them coming over giving you a slick slide. A uh, compliment, girl. I love your hair. I love your nails. You know this and that. Just want to get close enough to you so they can get in your energy and 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 hit you with one. So the next time they see you again, you ain't doing so well. You ain't feeling so you know up to you know putting you know putting that makeup on and you know coming out that door looking like smelling like money like you did. And that's what I'm getting. Somebody speak ill on your gifts because they shit don't work on you. It's a difference in a chosen one and somebody want to be picked. Somebody want to be chosen and somebody that is chosen. Okay? Deathbed confession came out in reverse.
So somebody gonna end up going through their karma. Or getting karma from something they spoke ill over you. Whatever illness somebody spoke over you, somebody gonna end up going through whatever this illness is. And it's gonna cause somebody to be in so much pain that they gonna end up saying what they did. It's like somebody gonna want to confess to somebody how sorry they are that they wish this on them. like somebody saying I'm sorry I didn't know you know that I didn't know who you were I didn't know you know you were this I didn't know you were that I didn't know you were protected I didn't know you know you were not to blame for something Like, I didn't mean, you know, for something to be this way. I didn't mean, you know, I was mad. I was upset. I was jealous. I was envious of something. I, you know, I wanted something, you know, for myself. And, you know, I wanted something better for me, you know. And I felt like I deserved, you know, that too. I deserve to be loved too. I deserve to, you know, have a soulmate. I deserve to, you know, have that position, you know, too. I feel like, you know, you know, I waited a long time to be, put in that position or be in that situation or, you know, to be selected for this or that. And it's like somebody, you know, now being stricken with the illness that they wished on somebody else, but it's also going to allow, going to cause somebody to expose themselves for what they did. Whatever this illness is, it's something that's very uh, painful. It could be something like lupus or something like that. Because I'm hearing something like joint pain. And they press too. Whoever this is, they could be having symptoms already of not feeling so well. Um, not feeling like getting out of the bed sometimes. Alone, feeling isolated, stuck. Loss of job, financial stability is their karma. Somebody wish this on somebody, I'm telling you. Close out this reading, even a card to close out on the spirit. Somebody wanted this for you, I'm telling you. Somebody spoke ill on your name, like in a lot of different ways. Like somebody just was all anger, like enraged. And I'm going to end it there. I said it was family. It had something to do with somebody's family. 
somebody mom is going through um I will be or is going through an illness. But I feel like somebody is, even if they hold out, you know, on letting. Because it could also be a thing where somebody could be, you know, a, go, experiencing some illness but that they wished on you because of something. I'm telling you, when I say somebody wanted to be where you are, where you are going, somebody wanted this for themselves and it was somebody's mom. That's for some of you, not all of you. Because I feel like a past person got some issues with their family. And you could be mirroring this person. So you could be, you know, this could be a counterpart to you. But somebody's going through something in their family dynamic. And you could be going through something in yours, collective. Man or woman, all right? Somebody's mom is going through something and they may just take it to the grave with them. Most people will, you know, have deathbed confessions. But they're also those moments where someone will go through so much um, pain, you know, from treatment that that, that deathbed confession is going to come way before that. I feel like somebody is going to be in suffering when it comes to pain that is going to make them, you know, speak up and speak out and profess, you know, whatever you know, needs to be said to set the record straight, to express exactly where their decisions stem from, the root of their problem. Even if it's something that has nothing to do with you. This could be something that a, a, a parent experienced from childhood that they have not healed from. Whether it's, you know, physical abuse, mental abuse, verbal abuse, whatever, all the above, Okay. Because so many things have went on, like in, you know, the early 50s, 60s, that, you know, as children to our parents, we don't know exactly, you know, what life was like, literally, to say that we understand uh, why they kept something silent, you know, or why they felt so ashamed or embarrassed or hurt by something they felt like they could not share. Those family, you know, dynamics, you know, came with a lot of rules, you know, even some of them stem to our life now where they say you know what goes on in this family stays in this family that kind of thing has left somebody scarred because they had nowhere to go to talk and you know express themselves and deal with these things you know therapeutically you know professionally with somebody and these can grow into habits you know of instilling them those situations you know to go that way in your children's lives and some parents will be frozen with fear frozen with you know trauma to deal with it when their children are going through it or when they see they self putting their children through it you know what i'm saying enough to say okay i'm repeating a pattern you know what i'm saying you're not going to do that if you haven't healed either especially if you're not taking accountability that it even happened if you're feeling to blame. And I feel like that's what somebody's dealing with here. Um, if somebody wants, you know, the achievement that you have made, they want, you know, the love that you're coming into. They want the opportunities, you know, that you're being presented with. Rather, you know, then, now, and moving forward. They didn't have that. They made different choices than you. Divine Feminine, Divine Masculine, Mom made different choices than you. Okay? Um, not all of them were bad, but you know, you made it, you're here. You, they did the best they could. You did, you know, the best you're doing right now. You know what I'm saying? So you are being able to make better choices as you, you know, those of you that have awakened and being able to master yourself and look at those things from the past that had nothing to do with you to be able to know what you're healing and what your karmic debt is coming from. You know what I'm saying? Some of it is not from the things we, you know, have made. A lot of us are, you know, going through karmic debt, you know, situations that have stemmed from other generations before us. 
You know what I'm saying? So we'll go through things that they went through, but it's up to us to make better decisions, to get past that, to overcome that, not let it, you know, conquer us. Okay? We have to conquer it and find a way to do that before the ending, you know, of our time here for the sake of our children. You know what I'm saying? So I'm mean, going to end it here, you guys. Make sure you do something nice for someone today. Put a smile on somebody's face, even if you don't know them. Hit that like for sure. Hit that subscribe button for sure. And come back and fuck with your girl. I fuck with you, all right? And as always, those that genuinely love me know that I love you too. Mwah. Bye.